Uh, so I'm Andrew Cox. I went and added my Twitter handle and since I'm here. So, uh, Wigan79. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Facebook and I work on the Thrift team. And I'm here to talk to you about how we use Netty at Facebook, specifically how we use it for Java Thrift services. So at Facebook, uh, when you look at service development, C++ has the most adoption. Um, there's a lot of libraries built for C++ or they're only Java friendly through JNI. Um, but still, uh, each team wants to be able to choose the right language. And so Java's pretty solidly in second place for obvious reasons as it's like uh, pretty established as a systems programming language behind C++. Um, and yeah, there's still lots of reasons you would choose Java at Facebook um, given the difficulties that I told you about before about the library. Um, yeah, so some of them are covered here. Um, uh, if you have to interact with Hive or HDFS, you're probably more likely to want to use Java. If you have an existing code base or uh, if you want to build on some existing open source project. Um, but uh, the, the kind of result of that is that we don't, get, uh, we, we don't really get as much resources devoted to Java development and so um, we didn't build a network framework specifically for Java like we did for C++. And that's where Netty comes in. So um, yeah, we didn't have to. Um, if all of those Java services are running at Facebook, which ones use Netty? All of them. Um, it's not entirely true, all of them. But now with, uh, with Java services moving to Nifty and Swift, um, which I'll be talking about later, um, they are pretty much all using uh, Netty for Thrift services. And then some of them use it for custom protocols. and. Some other teams are working with me or, uh, uh, for advice on how, as the, as the Nifty maintainer, how they can use Netty in their projects for their own custom protocols. Um, so some background on what Thrift is. I can probably mostly brush over this slide since uh, the Nagel guys here all know what it is and what, what, they, what anybody didn't know they heard from Evan earlier. But yeah, so it's our RPC system we develop at Facebook. It's open source. Um, it gives a way that we can have all the different languages that Facebook communicate with each other. Um, as you probably know, like our web back, our web front end is all written in PHP. Our, serv our back end services, as I said before, are all written in different languages. We need something to be able to talk between everything. Um, and um, yeah, so it, uh, like Finagle, um, we also aim to provide server and client frameworks so that people don't have to build those themselves if they would, as they would if they were, say, using something. Um, just a serialization framework like protocol buffers. Um, so what are Nifty and Swift? Nifty and Swift are new open source projects that we, uh, that we build our new Java services on. And Nifty, the Nifty component is the part that primarily uses Netty. It's the IO engine. And Swift is, uh, I'll be talking about it later, but it's an annotation based extension to how we use Thrift. Um, both of these were originally put together by uh, boot campers. Uh, who were interested in thrift or uh, Netty use, had, had experience with Netty usage or thrift at their previous jobs and thought it would be cool to build something. And uh, since then, we've taken over that on the thrift team and we kind of maintain these projects. Um, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, yeah, so we had a bootcamp or build Nifty, but why, why was that a bootcamp task? Why was that interesting for us? So um, Swift, uh, the, the other component I'm going to talk about, could have been could have been run on existing thrift servers, and in fact, it still can. Um, but building on Netty gets us the performance and reliability that we need, basically for free. Um, yeah, so uh, another question like uh, I thought of while Evan was talking, is like, why didn't we just use something like Finagle? Well, um, at the time, I wasn't too aware of what Finagle did, but also, I've talked with some of the Java developers, and they're not so interested in taking a Scala dependency. So not working in Scala, we, we, we wouldn't use that. But I mean, we, we, really like, we really like some of the ideas in Finagle. We want to take those and adapt them into what we use. So yeah, no offense there. But. Um, so what are the design goals of Nifty? So the design goals of Nifty are that it should be 
basically you don't have to do much work to get your Java thrift service that was already running on a previous server onto Netty. Um, it's a very traditional thrift server and um, it, you, you need to adapt the startup a little bit. Other than that, you don't usually have to do anything. Um, it takes advantage of some of the similar concepts that we added to C++ Thrift. We'll talk about those later. Um, but zero copy buffers through uh, channel buffer or byte buffer is uh, one of those examples. Um, and then Nifty also adds uh, multiplexing support, which yes, we do have in Thrift now. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned before, we get better reliability as well. So uh, here the, I'm gonna go quickly over the pieces of Nifty. Um, we have frame codecs, so we, we kind of, we take great advantage of Netty's pipeline, our channel handler pipeline to build uh, these things separately. And um, we build frame codecs that can actually detect what kind of messages coming in from a given client. Uh, we accept a couple of different backwards compatible type messages and um, the server can respond to all of those different types of messages and respond to them with the language that the client came in. That's all handled through our frame codecs. Um, we added asynchronous client channels so Thrift, the, the Apache version of Thrift actually has some asynchronous client support, but it doesn't have support for pipelining. It doesn't have support for out of order responses because that wasn't built into Thrift originally. So we've, uh, in Nifty, we've built channels that can do those things. Um, we have the Nifty Dispatcher. This is sort of the analogous part of the server to the uh, client channels that I talked about before. Nifty Dispatcher drives the uh, server it takes the messages that get broken up by the frame codecs and feeds them to the thrift processor and also manages the threading model a lot. Uh, and and uh, yeah, in, uh, in the case that the client doesn't support out of order responses, we need to block, uh, we, we have the head of line blocking problem. We need to buffer responses. So Nifty handles that as well for backwards compatibility with older clients. Um, and um, it also handles things like read blocking to make sure that when we do do pipelining, we don't get hundreds of requests backed up on the server um, using up a lot of memory. Um, and then an additional thing that we've recently built is that uh, we're adding security to our thrift services. And um, those security features, uh, they were originally added to C++ and then ported to Java so that we can, our Java services can participate in that. And it turned out to be a lot easier to add. Part, partly it was a second, second, uh, second system effect. It's easier to write the, the uh, security layer once you know what it's supposed to do from the C++ layer. But um, the, Netty, the Netty model of giving us channel handlers that we could just stick in the security uh, authentication and encryption pieces as separate parts of the channel handler pipeline made it a lot simpler to write and get working. All right, so that's nifty. What's Swift? Swift is uh, a different approach to Thrift where we chuck the ugly compile time code, generated code. Um, I know that, uh, I, I don't know uh, where Finagle is in, in respect to this, but I know uh, Marius was interested in this last time we talked. I know you guys have actually rewritten the Thrift code generator, um, something called Scrooge. I don't know if you're still using that, but yeah, I, I asked him about why is it called Scrooge? He says Scrooge is thrifty. Um, <laughs> I thought that was cool. I, I really like you guys' names. Um, so yeah, we, we decided for Swift, we actually get rid of the generated code. And uh, we, uh, we generate bytecode at runtime for critical things like type codecs. But the rest of the, the service management, actually, the, like a lot of the stuff that would normally traditionally show up in generated code in a thrift service, ends up in the normal framework code. That means it can be improved without having to touch a code generator alongside the framework code. And additionally, um, not, ha not requiring generated code allows Java developers to write their service using Java first and not have to go and write Thrift IDL and convert back and forth. Here's an example of how that works. So uh, in Thrift IDL on the left, we have a struct log entry. This is something taken from Scribe. Uh, pretty simple, uh, it's a simplified here, but pretty simple example. You have a category for your log message and you have a log message. Um, in Swift, you can see that it, it's pretty analogous. You annotate your class as a thrift struct, and you uh, add fields, in this case fields, uh, literally Java fields annotated with the, uh, the at thrift field annotation telling the field ID. 
Um, of course, Swift does support, and most people don't end up, uh, Swift does support getters and setters, and also immutable types with either constructors or builders. So most people don't end up using strings, but it fits on the slide better. I mean, uh, sorry, most people don't end up using fields directly, but it fits on the slide better. Uh, and then for annotating services, it's really similar. So what you would write in, in Thrift is uh, this small little struct saying, uh, I have a service called scribe, and it has this function called log, which takes a list of log messages and returns a result code. The corresponding thing in, thr in Swift, uh, it's pretty much the same thing, just annotated to tell where the thrift service, what's a thrift service class and where are the thrift methods in that class. Uh, so what do we do with that? Well, we end up building um, Swift ty type and service metadata. That metadata is uh, built using the annotations and a combination of the annotations and reflection to describe the types or services that we're going to use. Um, and then additionally for types, in addition to the metadata, we actually go and generate runtime bytecode for the read and write step. Um, yeah, so the metadata and bytecode, of course, cache so that we don't have to rebuild them every time. And um, then finally, we, make an, uh, we have a framework code for making and answering the request that goes and makes use of that metadata and the codecs that were built. Um, and that makes this framework code, which is the most commonly modified code to add new features, the, uh, it makes it a lot easier to modify, maintain, and improve now that we don't have to go touch code generation. So looking forward for uh, Nifty and Swift and where we want to go with that. Well, uh, Netty usage of, uh, and Netty usage in, in general. So Netty usage of Facebook is expanding. Um, we have, like, I, like I mentioned, we have some projects that uh, have contacted me to get uh, advice on porting to Netty. Um, and some that have actually been, uh, uh, at least one guy I know at Facebook has been working with Norman to make Netty improvements as he's been bringing it into his project. Um, and um, Nifty and Swift, well, yeah, so we have some work to do there. We're one of the, uh, the, the yeah, we're one of the bad ones that's still using Netty 3. But uh, in, in honor of this talk that I'm giving today, I uh, spent lot, most of last week when I, wasn't, uh, when I wasn't helping people out with problems, working on a diff to get us on Netty 4. So it's imminent. And it looks like it's just in time for a Netty 5 alpha because last time I looked at your tag list, that was there. Um, and then, so you guys mentioned that you're interested in having Netty run on other system languages. We're also interested, uh, I, again, I don't know, like I'm not committing that we're gonna build something like that, but we're, we've definitely been thinking that um, we'd like to expand our existing C++ networking framework to be more like Netty, have a layered model and uh, have a lot of the things that you guys add. So uh, we might be interested in working with you guys on that or, you know, building it, we'll see. And that's what I have.